Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to go to Create, Shader, Cinema 40 Octane and we'll be creating a mixed material. So just go ahead, drag and drop that onto a material. Let's go to our plugins, Cinema 40 Octane, open up your live viewer and just send the scene over to the live viewer. Then double click on your mixed material and open the node editor. An Octane Mix Material allows you to connect two materials and basically mix them together. So you can see if I select that, I've also got this amount slider. By default, it's on 0.5, which is a 50% mix. So I can choose how much of material 1 I want to be visible by moving my slider this way. Or if I want more of material 2 to be visible, I'm moving the opposite direction. But I'm going to put that back on 0.5 for now. So that's the basics of a mix material. It just takes two materials and mixes them together. So I'm going to start by going to the Octane Material over here and just drag and drop it onto my shader tree. And I'm going to connect this to Material Slot 2. We'll be adding Material Slot 1 later because that's what's going to drive our glow and our emission on our material. So I'll be starting off by creating the actual basic material. So I want to make sure that my material type for this Octane Material is on Glossy. And now we can go ahead and start editing this. I want you to pay attention to the left hand side. You'll see all of these blue icons. Now everything that's colored in blue over here is basically a texture node. So I want to use a texture node called the RGB Spectrum and this allows me to add additional color onto my material. So I'll drag and drop that out and I want to connect this to the diffuse. Now I can select my RGB Spectrum and you can see I can go ahead and select any color. Now I want to choose a really dark color. Let's say my V value on 4%. But now you'll notice in the live viewer that it's still showing a white sphere and that's because we need to select our mix material right go to mix materials remember I mentioned this amount value earlier it's currently on 50% so I want to bring this down and you'll see if I bring this all the way down okay now I can see a much more darker sphere and if I bring that value up it gets a lot lighter okay so I want to mix this further down I'm going to put this value on 0.01 and just press enter. So currently this material is very reflective. We can see all of these area lights in the sphere. So I'm going to select the octane material, go to roughness, and I want to put my float value on two, uh, 0 0.24. So I just want to add some additional roughness on here just to soften uh, the reflection. Alright, so now it's time to create all of those lines that you see on this pattern. And we're going, to, we're going to be doing that by using something that's called a generator. So everything that's green over here is called a generator. And generators basically generate patterns and different effects that get applied onto your material. So the generator that we're going to be using is called the noise generator. So just drag and drop that onto your scene. Go ahead and connect this to the specular and this to the bump. So you can already notice some changes that have been made to our material. As soon as I connected that to the bump, it just adds some more surface detail onto our material. And by connecting this to the specular, I'm actually going to be controlling where certain highlights appear on our pattern. But now we obviously need to adjust our noise pattern so that we can get those lines to be visible. So go ahead and select the noise. If I go to type, there's four different types of noise. So you can play around with these different noise types and see what they do but we're going to be using the chips noise okay then we've got some other sliders here like octaves and omega and this basically determines how much detail is visible on your pattern so if i decrease this i get more distinct sharp lines and if i start increasing that it just adds more detail onto our pattern and gamma controls how much of this pattern is actually going to be visible you can see just by moving the slider and then contrast is a really great way of clamping up certain values to create really harsh separations between different gradients. Okay, so I'm going to be typing in very specific uh, amounts over here so that I get those lines. I'm going to go ahead and put my omega on zero. I'm going to put my octaves on three since I don't need that much detail. Over here by my gamma, I'm going to put this on 0 0.24. And on my contrast, I'm going to put that on 8.3. And there we go. So we get these really, really sharp lines that you see over here. And our emission is going to be a result of being connected to all of these uh, lines that you see over here. 
I'm also going to go ahead and select the noise and I'm going to click on projection so that automatically creates a texture projection node and I'm going to change my texture projection from mesh UV to XYZ to UVW so it just places our pattern a lot better especially on our sphere but it also looks better on other pieces of geometry or complex geometry so this is a really nice texture projection to use the XYZ to UVW. Then over here I'm going to select this so that it does a universal scale and I'm going to put my scale over here on 2. So there we go. So these are the exact same lines from the material that you've seen in the, th in the thumbnail and light is going to be emitting from all of these lines. Now it's time to set up our material that's going to be connected into material 1. So drag out another octane material and in order to use emission under basic we have to use a diffuse material type you can see over there we get the emission option available so there we go as long as we change that to diffuse we'll have access to emission now I'm going to be using another generator which is called marble so drag and drop that out into your scene and the marble is basically going to determine which areas are going to be emitting light and which areas of these lines are not going to be emitting light and that's going to be determined by the overall marble pattern so if you select the marble pattern, I've actually left all of these settings default, so just make sure you're doing the same. So if I go ahead and try and connect this marble to emission, I actually can't connect it. And that's because you need to scroll down over here and drag out a black body emission and then connect that to emission. So, like I mentioned earlier, we need to determine which areas are going to, going to be glowing and which areas won't be, uh, won't be glowing on our material. So to do that, I'm going to be plugging my marble into distribution. So distribution is going to determine how the overall lighting gets distributed onto our material according to this marble pattern. Now just make sure you're also connecting this material we just created to material 1 but there are two more nodes we need to set up in order to get this material to start glowing. So I'm going to scroll down over here and find the invert node. So you'll see if I hover over these lines they turn orange so if I let go right now it automatically connects that node to the noise and then it connects it to the bump. Now I want to make sure this invert node is connected to my specular as well and I'm going to drag and drop this onto texture. So you can already notice that these lines have started glowing but if I select the black body emission and I start playing around with the power so if we increase that now we can really see these lines start glowing and remember in order for emission materials to be visible with octane render it's also dependent on the camera so if I went to this camera over here you need to make sure that bloom is enabled under post processing and that gives the emission materials like this some more glow. Okay so just keep that in mind. Right, so there we go, you can see all of these glowing lines, but you'll notice that some lines are glowing brighter than others, and that's a result of this marble generator. I just personally think it makes the material look a lot more interesting, instead of having all of these lines glowing at the exact same brightness. So we're nearly done. If you want to add different colors to these lines, you can either select the black body mission and play around with the temperature. You can see over here. But you're only limited to certain colors, so I'm going to put that back on... 6000. Right, so a better way to apply different colors on here is to use a gradient node. So I'll just drag and drop this over here, it'll automatically connect it. I'll select the gradient and now I can choose any color that I want. I want to make sure that this is clamped right at the end over here as black and then I can add any additional colors on top. Okay, so I'm going to click over here to add another one of these color pickers and you can use the exact same colors that I'm going to be using it's completely up to you so I'm going to double click on here and I'm going to put this on 23 74 and 73 so I'm just uh, I'm just playing with different shades of orange I'm going to select this one as well put my values on 47 74 and 85 okay so you'll notice that this underlying glow over here is orange and then right on top we've got this orange glow so it offsets these two colors really nicely to create this final orange glow that you see on these lines. Okay and then I can always go back to the mixed material and you can see by putting it on a value of 0 0.01 it mixes both the glossy and the, the diffuse together pretty nicely. You'll see if I increase this value a little bit more I'm obviously going to get 
what looks like a more intense looking glow but now i'm getting rid of you know that underlying really dark glossy material so i just found that a value of 0 0.01 works pretty well on this mixed material and remember when you're working with a mixed material like this that's using emission just make sure you've got enough samples so just click on the gear icon you can see mine's on 128 which is really low so just increase those samples so that it can try its best to get rid of all of the noise that you see on this material and like i said any emission material is going to be dependent on the camera and using the bloom power and also playing around with the camera image over here you can use maybe a response like linear right and just play around with some of the gamma until you get a better end result Okay, so you've created that material. Let's actually see how this looks on another piece of geometry. So I'm going to uh, just hide my sphere, enable the dragon in my scene, snap to the dragon camera, and let's drag and drop that onto our dragon. So there we go. Now we've got all of these glowing lines on a much more complex piece of geometry, and I think it looks pretty cool. Okay, so remember the power of any procedural material means that I can go back to my node editor and adjust anything over here. So if I wanted to change the noise to something else, like maybe turbulence, right, and send that back to the live view over here, you can see we've got everything set up, but now we get a completely different pattern where these lines are starting to glow as well. So it's completely customizable. And I think this is a truly powerful way of creating materials. Anything that you can edit that's non-destructive is always going to be awesome. Okay, so I hope you've learned a lot from this tutorial. You got an introduction to the node editor over here. And stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. I truly appreciate the support and goodbye.